Hello and welcome to Herald TV News Bulletin with me, Orina. In a major fire at Kalangut, four shops were completely gutted. The fire took place early morning at around 3 a.m. in a shopping area. Around rupees 70 lakh loss was reported to the owners of the shops. A vehicle which was parked outside the shops was also gutted in the fire. The cause of the fire is not known. Four shops at Kalangut were completely gutted in an early morning fire. Fire brigades from Pilen, Mapsa and Fire Force headquarters were rushed to the spot to control the blaze. Story by Prakash Gadekar for Herald TV. Goa Trinamool Congress today highlighted the party's commitment towards fulfilling its promise, abundant water and green Goa which is a crucial part of the party's manifesto that was launched a few days ago. AITC National Vice President and Rajya Sabha MP Luisino Falero said, Goa is known as an abode of peace and tranquility, but because of the failure of successive governments of both the BJP and Congress, the ecology, economy and livelihood of Goa has been destroyed. Goa is not a cold destination, but a tourism destination. Who sanctioned the double tracking of railway lines? Who approved the expansion of the Belgavi Highway? He questioned. 140 inches of rainfall. Our average rainfall is 120 inches. And most of this water ends into the Arabian Sea. If you have to store this water, you can convert the Goa state within these territorial boundaries. Not only as a swimming pool, but a diving pool. We'll have more than three and a half meters of water. But today, if you see, wherever we go, all over Goa, including Panjim, there is a shortage of water. Out of the 12 talukas, five have been reported for acute shortage of water. You go to Porvori, there is no water. You go outside Penjim, there is no water. <clears throat> now it is a crime. The successive governments have miserably failed to provide basic necessity of water to the people even though we are blessed with abundant rainfall. Now let us come to the environment. Goa is known as an abode of peace and tranquility. Our forefathers have painstakingly preserved, protected our environment. The successive governments of BJP and Congress has undertaken major projects which has destroyed and devastated our economy, our ecology, our environment, our livelihoods and the people of Goa. These are the successive governments who brought the coal and they are responsible and therefore they have no right to say that Goa is a, a, not a coal destination or they will stop the coal because they are the people who brought the coal. Goa is not a coal destination. Goa is a tourism destination. Goa is an international tourism destination. And 
TMC has undertaken to ensure that the import of coal will be stopped. Now, there are hoardings which are saying that they will stop the three linear projects. I have said it in the Rajya Sabha. These are the three cardinal sins against Goa. Double tracking of railway line. Today, one of our candidate, Marian Rodriguez from Kortali, he was supposed to come because he is fighting against this double tracking. Double, double tracking of railway lines, who brought it? It is nearly completed. In most of the places, it is creating a walk to the people who are residing by the side of the railway lines. Despite the claims of development, the Perry Urban constituency of Santa Cruz is facing serious issues which are festering for a long time. The Santa Cruz MLA Tony Fernandez switched over to the BJP in the name of development. Herald TV went into the by lanes of the constituency and asked the voters about development and what are those issues which require urgent attention of the next MLA. Voters of Santa Cruz constituency told Herald TV that garbage management, poor infrastructure, interference of the MLA in the functioning of the panchayat and lack of coordination among panchayat members are the most serious issues facing the constituency. The main issues are garbage. Okay? Last time we had the MRF material recovery facility. The issues are major issues. Azuni thing garbage pollala, but it is getting cleared. So it is a good thing that it is getting cleared because Saligao plant was not operational, so it was not. First thing is infrastructure is totally collapsed in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz and infrastructure munda the kaitsana. Konang spelling so the hover na ki infrastructure aji spelling ki dehati. Mid be roads. Hamka siaman sanglele ki roads aji reku hotda disa na. Azuni the hotda asa. Boilan chod hotda pollele aji da kothun. Park start First thing is the garbage, secondly is the electricity. Okay, electricity is a major problem. There is not a single day when we don't have a electric electricity problem in Santa Cruz. Poor Sudha Char Teme Pausaja Pole, Pau Char Teme Potta the electricity gale. A phone core tanka call center up, Temta feeder faulty. At the Char Temen is your feeder faulty. I don't know what is going on in electricity department. Thirdly is the infrastructure of these uh, roads, water supply. Water supply is not our problem. Okay, and I will tell you the major problem here is that there is no coordination. Whichever department is working here, maybe the MLA, the Panchayat, the Health or whatever. Breakdown of electricity and water supply are also major concerns in the constituency. They said MLA's interference in the Panchayat should stop. Panchayat is an autonomous body elected by the people, representative of all wards. There is enough, Amchi Santagru Zala, there we have enough resources to make our village a model village. We don't need funds. We have a very strong BDC team. We have so much, we have almost uh, got 1.8 crores from the center to 14th and 15th commission. Two small, small projects what we have. But what is the there is, there should not be interference of, of any MLA in the panchayat. This is the fourth or fifth time garbage site has been shifted. There is no coordination between uh, punch members also. Ruling ALM to the apur munda dada dale. Dusre hathe ye itun tenche hovers gain. Story by Devendra Gaunkar for Herald TV. A man who wears a white kurta is a super chief minister who controls the chief minister. He looks at files and has always influenced cabinet decisions, said Minister Michael Lobo, who recently left BJP. He told Herald TV that it was the role of the super CM which made him leave the party. Referring to a powerful organization secretary, Lobo spoke of how he hangs like a shadow behind Pramod Savant, influencing all his decisions. Michael Lobo declared that he will not leave the Congress and he's here with the party to play a long innings. He was speaking on the latest episode of Herald TV's Goa Wants to Know. Watch this full episode on Herald TV and YouTube. To get scared of him. Mm. And he is to bring his own bills mm -hmm. to be passed in the 
in the legislative assembly mm -hmm. whatever used to come in his mind he used mm -hmm. to put it up on paper right and get some dra drafting done right, and right. all those cabinet notes and so many other things came before the cabinet without our knowledge without we knowing anything about it so are you his. are you saying that the super cm interfered in cabinet decisions and everything look, and looked everything, at government files everything well? everything see he, okay. he was the shadow mm. be, behind the chief minister mm. and he used to dictate mm. to the cm do mm. like this mm. i am telling you so this you... was not a, i had a argument with him once okay. a big argument mm. Mm. in front of cm mm. what was it about <laughs> it was about same thing what what he was trying to impose things mm -hmm. was not accepted right and i asked cm so mm -hmm. he put his nose in the middle mm -hmm. i told him i am not asking you i am asking the cm so you were saying that the attitude of the super cm and his complete control over the cm oh, no no it's not over the is the control over the government so when i spoke one mm -hmm. i said why you all are not allowing him to okay to uh, sit for the election and let him be the chief okay. minister moving, moving see he the... becoming chief minister i have no objection okay. mm -hmm. at that particular time mm -hmm. he should become chief minister now he cannot dictate everything to the cabinet he cannot dictate everything to the legislature wing and say that mm -hmm. this is what i want to do now let's take a short break welcome back With just 13 days left for the Goa Assembly elections, several candidates are on their final stage of their door-to-door -door campaign. Here is a roundup of election mood and campaign across the state. Former Sankwal Sarpan Sharan Methi withdraws his candidature from Kottalim Assembly constituency. Says he started late and have no intention of splitting the votes, but will support a good candidate. 27 constitution son withdraw kela. डिवाइड कर लागून कॉन्स्टिट्युएन्सी लागून बरे काम करतलो बरो उमेदवार असा तेका हो टेको देऊन तेका निवडून हाडतले व्हाइल नॉन गोवन्स वर इग्नोर्ड ऑल दिस व्हाइल टुडे एव्हरी कॅंडिडेट इज अप्रोचिंग अस फॉर देयर वोट्स द पार्टीज मस्ट रिमेंबर अस इवन आफ्टर विनिंग इलेक्शन्स एंड नॉट फॉरगेट आवर वोट्स सेज इंटरेस्टेड टू कॉन्टेस्ट ऑन आरजी टिकट इन द नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन ऑल गोवा कनाडा साहित्य परिषद प्रेसिडेंट सिद्धाना मेती हर स्टेट में हर आदमी को अपना गांव संभालने का और अपना स्टेट संभालने का सभी को एक अंतरंग में एक उम्मीद रहता है लेकिन कैसा संभालना है हमारा गोवा हम कैसा संभालना है कर्नाटका उन लोग कैसा उन लोग संभालना है तो उन लोगों का एक एक संगठन रहता है लेकिन कैसा कर रहा है संगठन रहता है उधर अगर वो कुछ अत्याचार किया अन्याय किया वो ये और कुछ उसमें दो नंबर में ये किया तो अरे छोटा बिचारा काम करके मेहनत करके फूल बेच के फल बेच के काने वालों को तुम लोग उन लोगों को तकलीफ देता है वो ठीक नहीं है अगर तुम दूसरा अन्याय अत्याचार और कुछ किसी में दो नंबर बिजनेस में इन्वॉल्व होता है उन लोगों को पकड़ो और तुम लोग उन लोगों को यहाँ रखना भी नहीं तड़ी पार में करो उन लोगों को देश रे देश ये द्रोह और स्टेट द्रोह गोवा द्रोह लोग करने वालों को आप लोग रखो ही मत हम हम लोग को सपोर्ट ही नहीं करेगा ये हमारा है ऐसा हम लोग चलने वाला है हम गोवा कन्नड़ी का है गोवन कन्नड़ी का गोवा कांग्रेस माइनॉरिटी प्रेसिडेंट नाजीर खान सेज Nandadeep Roth has joined BJP for his benefit and his exit will make no difference to Congress in Vasco. Then aapne willing list da ke lage ha hum tumka Congress ak join kar pa paita. So humche Congress GPC sagle happy jale so ka tak indent kele with his followers and the daily members. Ani tenna to join jalo pa then aapne BJP che ex party che तेन अपने सगले कि बीजेपी चलता कि बैड चलता आनी बीजेपी इम्पोर्टन्स देना बीजेपी डेवलपमेंट करना ये सगले तो इंडस्ट्रीज आज इट्स ऑन द रिकॉर्ड हाँ मगर तक टिकेट मेना सी 
Munish Kosa was there. Once you join, you have to work for the party. Not because of just took a ticket, Ditle and Yet Ditle Munun to the Ashan Rajah, then you are not a leader. At Mandrem, MGP candidate Jeet Arolkar offered coconut to Shri Bhagwati Sapteshwar with Sudin Dawlekar with the Karyakartas ahead of his door to door campaign. Sankli Congress candidate Dharmesh Sanglani began his door to door campaign. On arrival to Goa, Aam Admi Party Supremo Arvind Kejriwal said that Goans have only two options ahead of the Goa polls. That is either forming an honest government or by casting their vote for any other party that will directly or indirectly benefit the BJP. K. Jival also accused the BJP of fielding candidates for Congress party in Goa. Arrival in Goa, Ahmadmi Party Supremo Arvind K. Jival said that Goans have only two options ahead of Goa polls. That is either forming an honest government or by casting their vote for any other political party leader that will directly or indirectly benefit the BJP. Kejirbal has also accused the BJP of filing candidates for the Congress party in Goa Boch. <laughs> और दूसरा ऑप्शन है कि डायरेक्टली या इनडायरेक्टली बीजेपी को वोट देना इनडायरेक्टली से मेरा मतलब है कि अगर वो किसी और पार्टी को भी वोट देते हैं तो वोट तो बीजेपी को ही जाएगा जैसे पिछली बार कांग्रेस को वोट दिया तो वो सारे एमएलए को बीजेपी में चले गए दूसरी पार्टी को भी वोट दिया तो सारे एमएलए बीजेपी में चले गए इस बार भी हम सुन रहे हैं कि इस बार तो बीजेपी ने अपने सारे कई सारे लोगों को कांग्रेस के टिकट दिलवाए हैं कि जीतने के बाद वो सीधे बीजेपी में चले जाएं साल से टेरिया ऐसा है जहां पे बीजेपी के जीतने का कोई चांस नहीं है तो बीजेपी ने अपने कई सारे कैंडिडेट्स को कांग्रेस का टिकट दिलवाया है ताकि वो जीतने के बाद बीजेपी में चले जाएं तो वो आके लोगों को क्या कहना है कि या तो आप आम आदमी पार्टी को वोट दे सकते हैं ईमानदार सरकार बना सकते हैं या डायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली आप बीजेपी को वोट दे सकते हैं ये दो ऑप्शन है केवल इस चुनाव में The Congress on Tuesday labelled Amit Shah's announcement of restarting of mining as a political jumla to woo the nearly 3 lakh mining dependents. GPCC President Girish Jodankar said BJP has been promising this since the 2012 election and before every election. Congress also announced that Congress leader would arrive in the state on 4th February due to the budget session. Congress questioned why the mining corporation was not started since 2012. Girish Chodankar blamed the BJP for stopping mining. He also announced that jobs were sold and that these recruitments would be scrapped and appointments made by the Staff Selection Commission. Now, Shri Rahul Gandhi ji do tariq ko nahi, char tariq ko goa padhar rahe hai. Char tariq ko, jo tay karikram do ke the, wo vaise hi rahenge. डिजिटल रैली जिसमें 20,000 के करीब हमारे लोग गोवा से उनके साथ संवाद में जुड़ना था हमारे टूरिज्म के जो स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं आशा वर्कर्स हैं हमारे 40-40 उम्मीदवारों का राहुल गांधी जी के साथ इंटरेक्शन राहुल गांधी जी का डोर टू डोर कैंपेन वो सब कार्यक्रम वैसे ही रहेंगे पर ये सब कार्यक्रम अब चार फरवरी को होंगे अनाउंस के लिए जुमला अनाउंस के लिए कि माइनिंग स्टार्ट जात लेंगे इलेक्शन जातकर माइनिंग स्टार्ट जात लें क्या दो अलग जुमला हो इस इस अनदर जुमला ना इट लुक्स लाइक एस इफ कांग्रेस इज रूलिंग एट द सेंटर एंड इन द स्टेट ना अगेन द अलियर प्रमोद सावंत हैज अनाउंस्ड द माइनिंग विल रिज्यूम ना एवरी टाइम दे से माइनिंग विल रिज्यूम फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट सीजन दिस इज the corporation option was there in 2012 also. So then why you have kept all this thing till the assembly elections are announced? Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in her fourth budget presented on February 1st said the country is expected to grow at 9.27% in the coming year. The budget focused on inclusive development, productivity, enhancement, energy transition and climate action, 
which will be a blueprint for the economy from India at 75 to India at 100. Country's total expenditure is estimated at 39.45 lakh crore rupees, while receipts are estimated at rupees 22.84 lakh crore rupees. Fiscal year 23 fiscal deficit target has been projected as at 6.4 percent of GDP. The highlights from Sita Raman's budget: our digital rupee will would be issued by the RBI in 2022-23. There's a rollout of 5G spectrum by the 2023 20, through private players. Tax induction limited to the increase from 10% to 14% for center and state government employees. Taxpayers can now update their IT returns within two years from the relevant assessment year. There has been no change in the income tax slab in budget 2022. E-passports with about chips and touristic technology will be rolled out in 2022-23. 2,000 kilometers of rail network will be brought under the Indusius world-class technology coverage for safety and capacity augmentation. 400 new generation one day Bharat train to be built over the next three years. Gati Shakti master plan PM Gati Shakti is driven by seven engines, the roads, railways, airports, ports, mass transport, waterways, and logistic infrastructure. Rupees 48,000 crores of completion of construction of about 80 lakh houses under the PM Awas Yojana in rural and urban areas in the year 2022-23. Private sector encouraged to set up electric vehicles, EV sharing stations. Digital education, one class, one TV channel program on PM Evidya will be expanded from the 12 to the 200 TV channels. ECLG services for hospitality sector extended to March 2023 with an increased cover of rupees 50,000. Ministries, state governments and their infra agencies will have their skills upgraded. This will ramp up capacity in planning, design, financing, including innovative ways, and implementation management of the PM Gati Shakti infrastructure projects supported throughout the country with a focus on farmers' lands in five kilometer wide corridors along the river Ganga at the first stage. Support will be provided for post harvest value addition, enhancing domestic consumption, and for branding millet products nationally and internationally. One class, one TV channel program of PM e Vidya will be expanded from 12 to 200 TV channels. In 22-23, 80 lakh houses will be completed for the identified eligible beneficiaries of the PM Avas Yojana, both rural and urban. 48,000 crores is allotted for this purpose. While welcoming what is called a development and growth-oriented budget, GCCI said the union budget would benefit the tourism and logistics sector. The extension of ECGL services till March 2023, an increased cover of rupees 50,000 and development of infrastructure and railways would boost domestic tourism. GCCI also said that supply chain and logistics would be boosted by cargo terminal, expressways and ports development, which are proposed in the budget. The biggest relief to industry is that it has not been taxed additionally. There is no additional wealth tax, no estate tax and tax slabs are the same. Corporate tax surcharge too has been reduced from 12 to 7 percent. The industry is also welcoming the proposed SEZ law. E-services, e-passports, digital currency are also a big plus, GCCI said. Reduce on digital currency by RBI. As far as the logistics, logistics is concerned, in rail, road and every other aspect, including the terminals, we've seen there's a huge investment coming here. And this is important to connect the countries. On taxes, we see that there is no wealth tax, neither there is an estate duty that has been introduced which is positive. The tax slabs remain the same. We 
we have got a new SSR loss coming in. We have already collect. Uh, we have also the news that uh, the returns which have been filed can be updated now. This is a very good scheme of settling with better connectivity, better roads, rail services. There's going to be a huge dramatic movement which will give the boost to tourism. The other aspect is that there is a special move to help the industry because in case of any pandemic or any other casualty or tragedy, the hospitality industry is first to get affected and last to recover and is still going through problems. So this the extra financial help that is coming in is most welcome. Because of course we have been given a lot of leverage as far as any organization of loans are concerned, monitoring period. But this is more of postponing the liability when the things when we have to pay, the things will all come back to us. But this is a welcome move that the government has appreciated the trials and tribulation that the industry is going on. I think particularly with Goa, what looks very interesting to me is supply chain and logistics. We are a small market. We can't consume everything ourselves. But we can produce something and send it to the rest of the country, to the rest of the states, as well as internationally. I think the focus on cargo terminals, the focus on expressways, roadways, ports, linking of rivers, though... We should be very happy and thankful that we have not been overly taxed in order to keep the voters happy, which is a very, very positive sign, I feel, on behalf of the government. Because they are not trying to penalize the industry for a vote bank, which is, I think, going in the right direction. The next best news which was shared by our Honorable uh, Finance Minister was the GST collection. There has been a lot of UN cry that the economy is not growing, things are not happening, businesses are down. This is just a feeling. Because the GST collection, which is highest ever of 1.4 lakh crores, is contrary to these beliefs. So that means Indian economy is on the right track to go up. That's all we have in today's news bulletin. Thanks for watching Herald TV News. For more news alerts, please follow us on Oheraldo and on Facebook and Twitter. Take care and goodbye.